Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and behind me here you can hopefully see my Microbitex HF transceiver uh, which is I'm very pleased to say working fine in fact it's restored to health. Now I came across a problem with it the other day and having sorted the problem out I thought it might be worthwhile just documenting it in the form of a video so if you do come across this yourself um, you'll hopefully uh, not have to uh, and go through all the pain that I did to understand exactly what was going on. So let's start by um, having a look at the radio now and then looking at uh, what was uh, what was going on. Here is my Micro Bitex version 6 radio. It's appeared on several previous videos and as you can see I've just got it tuned to um, aeronautical uh, weather station Shannon Volmet. I use this because it's a stable um, SSB signal which uh, is on uh, 24 hours a day um, and as you can see the radio is working um, fine uh, but it wasn't working fine so now let's um, let's go back in time to some footage I took um, earlier uh, and illustrate uh, the problem to you okay to so look at the uh, fault mode then um, came to the radio the other day I intend to make a video um, as part of my uh, oscillator series um, and I want to um, use something in this radio uh, to demonstrate a way of obtaining waveforms. Um, so I came to uh, switch the radio on and uh, this is what occurred. Um, I was a little bit surprised at first, the display is lit up as you'd expect but we've got all zeros and turning the tuner which is a rotary encoder, makes no difference. Um, but bizarrely, if I tap on the menu, I can hop into um, various menus, and if I try then and read the data into there, nothing happens. Um, but I can hop back to the main menu again, I can um, make adjustments to things, I can move the attenuator, etc. Um, I can even hop between VFOs, but um, I can even go on to here and when I try and tune uh, nothing happens so if I tap on some of these bands I just keep getting back to, to zero effectively so it's a bit baffled by this um, so let's just have a look at how the micro bit X works if you're familiar you can probably skip this bit if you're not we'll just have a look how it works and then you can see how I uh, reached my my conclusions about um, about what was wrong. Okay, if you're familiar with the um, micro bit X, you'll um, this will make complete sense. But what we've essentially got is the main board here uh, on the bottom, which is the the radio, pretty much in its entirety. And this daughter board here is what gets called the Raduno. Uh, that's because it's um, it contains the display. It also contains the frequency synthesizer chip. This additional board here is um, my uh, uh, signal strength meter uh, addition, which is the subject of a previous video. I'll put links to all these videos in this description. But here we've got an Arduino Nano that's programmed with the um, various um, bits of information that essentially run the radio. And the Arduino Nano commun communicates via I squared C with the frequency chip and there's three clock signals get taken from here onto the board. This wire here comes from the rotary encoder and those wires pretty much connect directly to some of the digital pins on the on the Arduino. So having pondered it for a bit I decided probably the best plan was just to um, just to see if the problem was the, Ar the Arduino and not being sure about that I thought I'm going to get another one. I mean they're not a great deal of money. Um, so I got ordered one from a, a British supplier which arrived um, a few days later and the thing to notice is um, another Arduino Nano that ordinarily if you were going to use one of these with a breadboard you'd, you'd put the pin headers downwards um, so you could sit the Arduino Nano on, on the breadboard like that um, but in the case of the Microbitex it needs to be done the other way around so I bought one and soldered the pins on I uh, flashed the software onto it and then changing the um, 
uh, Arduino is incredibly straightforward. There's a USB extension here that unplugs, and then if you just, in fact, it's easier if you've not added the additional um, boards that I've added. The, the Arduino unplugs. That's the one that you've just been seeing the display on. Um, the new Arduino simply plugs in uh, like so. And I'm going to connect up the USB. You don't need to connect that up. It's um, it's purely a, an extension that takes the USB out to the back panel should you so need it. Now I've already programmed this, and because um, and I'll I'll show you in a moment on the screen uh, what I did. But I programmed it with the hex file, and also I um, have saved the data from my setup. Um, so I also put the data back on. Again, I'll show you that in a moment on the on the file. But in reality, this the Arduino simply controls the oscillator, and the the calibration, as it's called, of the radio is very much getting the oscillator to work with the various components. And you can see there's lots of toroidal transformers here that have been made, and obviously there's variations in the in when they're made, and. Once you've calibrated the radio, you're really making the oscillator chip work with the motherboard. Now I've not changed anything there, so my reasoning was that um, I should just be able to swap it. So let's just get the radio um, back the right way up, and then we'll look what um, what the results are from changing the board. Okay, got the radio connected up. I've just got it to um, a bit of wet string outside, it could be rude to call it an antenna, but it, it's just enough to see if it works. So immediately to switch on we get the zeros, but then very quickly we've now got something sensible and this is actually, um, I don't know how well you can hear that, but this is uh, Shannon Volmet again. And sure enough, turning the um, rotary encoder for tuning uh, tunes, uh, I can also uh, tap onto the menu and if I put it, pick the um, memory to VFO to get that to fill you tap read and it reads in my data and then if I choose a different one like that if I can remember how to do it there we go yeah and if I now go back to the main board I've now gone to the RAF um, volment which is about 55 kilohertz underneath I don't know whether you can hear that. Um, now initially when I switched this on uh, it wasn't, although I got it tuned to the right frequency I couldn't, I could tell there was something there but it wasn't quite right and that was before I updated the, the calibration file which I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, once I'd done that everything was fine so I'm, I'm pretty convinced that by putting my uh, data back in, I've actually uh, essentially got the radio back to exactly how it was before um, um, for the case of a few pounds. So I'm pleased about that because these radios aren't a lot of money and quite frankly, they're excellent. Um, very, very good indeed. So um, nice work, uh, Ashura Fanon, for producing something that's as good as this. Um, not everybody's got thousands of pounds to spend on a HF rig and this is a really nice job. So let's just have a look what I did from a software point of view. If you come across this problem yourself, hopefully it'll help you. Okay, let's have a look at uh, what's going on from a software point of view. Now this isn't a video about uh, installing the right software onto the, the micro bit X. I've covered that in previous videos, so I'm just going to uh, hopefully show you the fault. So I've got the Arduino attached. It's attached on uh, port COM5. You can see there this is the X loader utility that allows me to load a, a binary file straight onto the Arduino because the software for the BitX is quite large so you, you can't use the Arduino IDE. Well you, there is a way to do it but it, this is much easier. X loader does the job rather well. Now um, again, you need to pick the right version of software for your uh, particular display, etc. So don't necessarily use this one, but we we pick a file, and uh, here we'll uh, pick that hex file there, which appears in the window here. And then if we click upload, it says it's uploading, as you can see there, and uh, it ticks away and appears 
um, to be doing something but in reality uh, it hasn't actually done anything because as you can hopefully see there it's not particularly large text but it says upload failed um, and that's the, the first giveaway so on a new Arduino we don't get upload failed um, which uh, is good um, and then if you put um, a correctly flashed Arduino back into the radio uh, you'll get uh, a display that um, hopefully uh, works correctly so I tuned it to 5505 kilohertz and uh, I could hear a station but it wasn't tuned correctly and that's because the calibrations off so I then use the micro bit X settings editor this is the Windows version and I'll just run that up now so you can see it and what's um, handy about this is it allows you to back up uh, your micro bit X settings and save them to a file and I'm pleased to say I did that back in September last year so if I clicked on save file and then I uh, hop down onto desktop and actually load that file it's got the BTX extension there um, you'll hope no, we click on read I keep forgetting to do that uh, it says there settings successfully loaded and if we look along here it's calibration we've got some numbers in there and we've also got the memory channels etc with the various uh, labels on them so in fact I've got a couple of um, uh, common uh, aeronautical uh, radio stations which allow me to um, to check if something's working because they both transmit 24-7 and I've got uh, some of the 60 meter uh, spot frequencies that um, we for use here in the UK because I like I quite like to listen on 60 um, and then what we do is we change to microbit X uh, we refresh the port list and we should then get a com5 and if we then change you know we change to bit X so if we that's the read apologies down at the bottom here refresh the port list pick com5 and you can see that write is now become enabled and we'll click on write and um, it appears to be doing something um, it keeps reporting uh, along here exactly what's going on but um, as I'm sure you're going to work out because the uh, Arduino uh, wouldn't even allow itself to be programmed uh, uh, this isn't going to work either and didn't get much of an er error message off this one but the clue of course was you weren't able to flash it now ordinarily if I used in um, a correctly working Arduino, put the flash on and then do this uh, uh, upload, it will um, install my settings onto the Arduino and then when I plug it back in, sure enough, tune to that frequency and I can hear the SSB signals correctly. Um, so that's rather nicely put back my um, calibration settings and saved me a lot of work. So that's how you use the software. OK, well there you have uh, uh, the problem, the fix, and a little bit about the software. But the bit that I've not mentioned, which probably is worth mentioning, is the bit that initially confused me was that when I came to the radio and it was showing all zeros, I was still able to access the menus on the screen. And I didn't really think too much about that, um, but having thought about it a bit, I realised uh, there's a clue there to what's going on. The first clue is that when you turn the rotary encoder nothing was happening. Now the rotary encoder is connected pretty much directly to the Arduino so clearly the Arduino is not responding to that or if it is it's not taking any action. Um, the next thing that's a bit baffling is well why can you still um, tap on menus in the screen and get some functionality and the answer to that um, I eventually got round to the, the realisation that because this radio has got an upgraded screen with the Nexteon display, the Nexteon display itself has some programmable capabilities. In fact, when I, if you look at the video where I put the, um, where I documented putting the actual new Nexteon display in, you actually have to load software onto the screen, um, which are actually the, the screens themselves and the menus, and then the um, the screen gets its data from the Arduino. So the clue there is, yeah, you can hop around the menus, but actually what you're really doing there is hopping around the menus that are on the um, code which has been uploaded to the screen 
and not to the Arduino and that's why I think you can get that to partial functionality which was initially a bit confusing so maybe just wear, bear that in mind I think on the original screen that comes with uh, the Microbit X it's not quite as smart as that it, it's a bit of a dumber screen so you probably wouldn't get functionality I'm not 100% sure but um, certainly with the Nexteon um, there is some um, if you like accessibility around the menus even though the what's on them doesn't make any sense so I hope that's uh, been useful and I hope if you've got a Microbit X you enjoy, enjoy using it and if you do come across that problem hopefully this has uh, helped you to fix it thanks very much for watching and look forward to seeing you on the next video